Let's get ready to rumble! Senior Nation Jam-packed show today. Peloton of five percent. What's up, discipline investor? We got Benzinga CEO Jason Raznick here with us. The man, the myth, the legend, Tom Nash. Peter Schiff on the Power Hour with us live today. Interesting, different, unique, innovative companies. Mia, you are live with us on the Power Hour. What's up? Thank you so much for inviting me on. Jessica Billingley is the CEO of Aperna. The best trade idea resource out there. Yo, what is going on, everybody? Happy Friday. I'm in a different spot today, a little bit of a different setup. Uh, Drew, you're getting some crazy background noise, man. So I pulled you off, but you are in my seat. Look at it. I'm, I'm in a different place today, guys. But what's going on? A little bit of a tough day in the spy. Uh, I mean, whole market is getting cracks. We will absolutely be talking about that. But guys, you are on the Power Hour. This is the Trade Idea Show. That is what we're going for. We, we've got an awesome lineup of guests to, to be joining us today, to be hanging out, to be dropping some ideas, talking about how they're handling this blood red market. Um, and of course, we're relying on you guys. All right. So, so let's get some tickers in the chat, drop them in there. We'll have time to look at them today. Um, and and let's, let's just get cooking. But guys, for, first things first, Pro Trader Mike is going to be joining us. We're, we're going to be talking some ideas talking you know he he was saying that that he saw the the downside coming today so we'll talk about what tipped him off to that uh and then we're going to be talking to vaxart to, uh ticker vxrt and the second half of the show that's gonna be at 12 30 eastern in between i do want to take a look at tesla again it's a stock that we've had our eye on all week we we, we hadn't hopped into it today but but it's it's one of the names that that's holding up to despite about a the S and P's down about a percent. So we'll look at that one. Uh, we'll, we'll do a quick look at Neo because I know people are going to drop that one in the chat. And again, guys, if you have other tickers, other stocks for us to look at, let's get them going without further ado. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's see if we can bring Drew back on. Drew, what's going on, man? Oh man. Nope. Still, still no audio. That's all right. We'll work on it. We'll work on it. Uh, and I see somebody saying, let's go VXRT. Yeah, absolutely an interesting stock. But all right, let, 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 let's bring our first guest of the day on here. Let's get Pro Trader Mike on to the power hour. Hello, sir. How are you doing on this Friday? Friday's the greatest. And okay. when you're done early trading, it's a special extra bonus because you could just hang and chill and not a lot to do when you've already hit your goal for the day pretty quickly. There you go. See, see, I like the summer Fridays. I know a lot of people say that they don't like the summer Fridays because you, you've got, you know, less volume the, the market may get a little bit boring, but I love them because you get like the, the bullshit rumor mill just gets really kicking on, on these summer Fridays. I mean, it, it's like, you know, I, I, I'd say three out of four weeks on, on a summer Friday, especially in the afternoon, one, two o'clock, you get some rumor bu bubbles out of some chat room and you get a stock start running. Um, and those things are just fun to watch, fun fun to try to take some action on, et cetera. So, so I like, like my, my There's Friday been stuff. a lot of those this week. It's been fun. Absolutely. So, all right. Uh, you know, tough market day, right? I'm, I've got spy up on the screen here, guys. This is one year chart, daily candles. I'll zoom it in. Here's a two-day chart, five-minute candles. Um, you know, we, we've got a bounce off the bottom. It looks like who knows if that's the bottom for the whole day. But, but Mike, on a, on a day like today, how, how are you managing it? Are, are you in any positions? Are, are you just sitting on the sidelines watching? I mean, what, what's going on today? Well, yeah, I have two approaches to the trading. And one is day trading where I'm pretty much – not bullish and I'm not bearish going into each day. I just like to be right. So I, I have no premonition of what the market's going to do because mostly during the day you have this triangle effect where it goes straight up and at some point comes straight down almost mostly even where it started. So I just trade pretty much a few different accounts. And when I log in during the day, I see what Momo is happening, what momentum's happening. And I trade a nickel and a dime here on a smaller stock, 
a 25 or a 50 or even a dollar move on a larger stock. And a larger stock's like $1,500 a share. And a smaller stock's like that VXRT, which I traded today in the, in the 5 to $10 range. And you only look for nickels, dimes, and quarters on those kind of trades. Yep. Okay. So, 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 so can you throw us out some tickers or, or do you have any, maybe you have a screen to share or, or, with something I do. to look at? Let me show you the Dosh Trader platform and what I share with my, my Okay, room. shout out Dosh Trader, good friends of Benzinga. Check them out. I, I feel like there's, there's not nearly enough. Uh, that platform doesn't get the exposure it deserves. I've been on this platform, my friend, for over 15 years. I started the Mojo Day Trading Room in 2012 and have streamed this platform. Do you see it right now? There we go. Boom, we got it. So I have streamed this platform every day and it's like Donkey Kong and Asteroids and Pac-Man. You know, when you've played these old time, it's very simple to me. It's a, I play it over and over and over and over. I'm on the leaderboard. I've mastered this video game. I've put 10,000 quarters into it and I've, I've mastered it now as an adult where I did the same thing as a child, like you all did, you know, with, oh, yeah. with the video games. And now the kids are mastering you know, the Fortnite and all these other games, but they don't got to put quarters in. They're just paying, you know, $5 for coins here and there. It's a little different atmosphere, but it's the same kind of principle. You become a master at it. You see patterns, techniques, pick up tips and tricks, and you learn a lot from your mistakes. And that's what a trader does. <clears throat> yep. So, so, all right, let, let, let's hop into this. Let, let, but before you get to it, to a specific ticker, because I do want to want to talk about some specific tickers or setups or, you know, the, uh, either the things that fell apart, whatever it may be. Uh, but, but get, give us like one, one tip or trick that, that you learned throughout the years. If, if you had to name one principle, which you figured out has made you a successful trader, what, what would that be? Oh, that's pretty easy. I'm going to okay. share my, uh, my, uh, Stop screen, share screen. Okay, here you guys are. Share that screen right there. All right, we have it up. This is the Mojo Day Trading chat room. Okay. okay. So this is what I've learned over the years, this Heinz trade. Everything Heinz is. And what I'm going to show you is, Let me just pull up this file right here so I could put it in here. You're going to like this. All right. All right. Here it is, my friend. Okay. Okay. Let me pull it back over. I had to put, shut my, pull my screen off for a second. Okay. So this Heinz trade play, what is it? It works with amazing consistency. I used to be a professional poker player. And I've journaled millions of trades. I had 13 uh, hands in poker that I would only play. And when they would come up, I'd bet really strong with positive expectancy that the odds were in my favor. I had m way more reward than risk. I'd be really aggressive and I'd win on those one of 13 hands. Everything else I'd fold and get out of the way. It was a long game of patience. Going into day trading, I journaled the same thing. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of trades. Looking at the data, I noticed one trade play worked over and over with amazing consistency. Whenever the stock was at 90 cents, just under the even number, it was green on the day, volume was going in. It had a 90% chance of going through par or the even number. At 95 cents, it got even stronger. At 98 cents, it always, always went 99, zero, zero, and then would punch through. It was very up and down from zero, zero from 90 to zero, zero. But then when it would punch through, the ketchup would fly all over the place like a bottle of ketchup. You got to tap okay. it a couple of times when it's brand new. But once that thing flies over, it's all over all your fries. And I call it the Heinz trade play. And back in the day, this guy, Jesse Livermore right here, because Wall Street traders are obsessed with Jesse. In the 1900s, he bought his first share at 15 and became a really amazing, one of the well-known best traders of all time. 
and I want okay. you to do this. I sat in front of a quotation board in another broker's office where I couldn't buy or sell as much as one share of stock, studying the market, not missing a single transaction on the tape, watching for the psychological. Let me give you the little background. Jesse Livermore in the 1900s, one of the greatest traders of all time, mm -hmm. made, a, made a fortune, then went broke, paid everybody back, then had his chance to get back in the game. He had to make sure it was when he got back in, he couldn't take the same risks as he did before. But when he got back in, this is what he did and how he did it. And it was a hundred years ago, back testing everything that I do now. And, and, and let me ask you this too, right? So, so when you're talking about him being a trader back in the day, uh, was he like intraday trading? Was it, was it swing trades? Was it like more longer term investments? I mean, what type of trading was he doing? This is what he does. Listen. Okay. For reasons of conditions known to the whole world, the stock I was most bullish on in those critical days of early 1915 was Bethlehem Steel. I was morally certain it was going way up, but in order to make sure that I would win on my very first play, as I must, I decided to wait until it crossed par. I think I told you it has been my experience that whenever a stock crosses 100 or 200 or 300 for the first time, it nearly always keeps going up for 30 to 50 points, and after 300, faster than after 100 or 200. One of my first big coups was an Anaconda, which I bought when it crossed 200 and sold a day later at 260. My practice of buying a stock just after it crossed par dated back to my early bucket shop days. It is an old trading principle. You can imagine how keen I was to get back to trading on my own scale. I was so eager to begin but I could not think of anything else. But I held myself in leash. I saw Bethlehem Steel climb every day, higher and higher, as I was sure it would. And yet there I was, checking my impulse to run over to Williamson and Brown's office and buy 500 shares. I knew I simply had to make my initial operation as nearly a cinch as was humanly possible. 100%. Every point that stock went up meant $500 I had not made. The first 10 points advance meant that I would have been able to pyramid. And instead of 500 shares, I might now be carrying 1,000 shares that would be earning for me $1,000 a point. But I sat tight, and instead of listening to my loud mouth hopes or to my clamorous beliefs, I heeded only the level voice of my experience and the counsel of common sense. Once I got a decent All right, so, 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 so take, take us through that. So uh -oh, basically, I'm getting some what did, basically what he did was it was coming up right to it. It got to 95. He ran over to the office. It got to 98. He bought 500. It closed at 114. He bought 500 more. Next day it opened at 142 and he had his stake back. And it's been back tested. One of my students sent me that. And it's a little three minute insert that just really back tests this system that I develop and I use in the markets every day, whether it's stock trading, crypto trading, or futures trading, everything goes into the even number. Okay. That's All right. I All I, I like it. So, so there it is. I, I, I asked pro trader Mike, I said, said, give me a principle, something that you learned, something you took out of the market. Uh, that, 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 that's given you the edge, that's helped you to be successful. And there we have it. And, and then Pro Trader Mark, will, will, will you give us a symbol as well? Or, or, or if you want to share a screen, show us a setup. Let, 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 yeah, let me show you right here. Going. This is what I did here today. I'm sharing my screen, did about 15 minutes ago. Okay. Uh, the symbol is LEDS. LEDS, right let's look at, at that one. Right here. It was a 20 going through $20. It had just made a move up through Heinz 20. And I liked it right there. Usually it'll pick up some strength right through here. And then it showed a signal at 2095. You see the circle, the 52? Mm -hmm. That's a large ask. It's bullish. I teach the level two where the large bid is bearish. The large ask is bullish. It's going to go through that 2095. If the number was on the other side, it would go lower. But the numbers on the right side, which is the ask, it's going to go higher. So we're going to prepare to go through that. It's 2065 by 74. 
I have 11,744 shares at 2062. I'm up $330. Here, and this is another one. This is your uh, ORPH going through Heinz 9. Okay. Here's 2081 by 93. You see the large ask on yep. LEDs. They're lining up. There's a 26 on the ask, meaning it's moved from 95 now to 21. I have uh, 15,000 shares. I'm down $200 right now. It hasn't made its move yet. It came back down 10 cents. But nobody knows the number at 21 is still there. He's hiding it in the level two, which you can hide in order. So you could put up size and then you can hide the order and show 100 shares where you're really trying to sell 10,000. It's a trick in the level two. And I know that. So here it firms up at 2080. And there it goes. Watch how fast it went. It went from 110703 to 110715. In four minutes, it went through Heinz. It's at a new high, $21.15. I sold half. I'm up, realized 4928 unrealized 2629 this and let me ask you this. Are, are, are you still holding on to half of it or, or are you totally closed sold. out of the position? So I just sold right here. I have a 15.3. Now I have 7,600. I sold half the position. On the Dosh Trader, the number in the red where it says half market, all I do is click that. It sells half the position at the market. I click a quarter market. It sells a quarter of the position at the market. Or if I want to get out of all of it, I click all market and it dumps the whole thing. So right there, I sold half through the Heinz and my stop now is 21. I want to see if it goes higher and it goes a little higher to 21.15. So I reduced from 7,600. I hit the half button again, sold half again. I realized 65. And, and how are you making the decision to, to sell half, right? Like, like why is it that I teach? From, okay. from the data, from I've documented through the Heinz, I know that I, the space is up the ladder where I'm going to be selling. It's, it's basically very, very simple. If you go like this, it's just a ladder. All right. I like the MS paint. Okay. So it's just All a right. ladder. And what I'm doing is I'm selling as it goes through on the way up, this is in green, I'm selling here, here. But how do you know where the here. rungs in the ladder are? Or, or, well, this you know. is 30 cents, this okay. is 20 cents, this is 10 cents, and this is the Heinz. It just okay. went through. There you go. I'm going to sell half here, an eighth here, an eighth here, and I'm flat here. Okay. Right under the 50 number because the odds are it's going to come down. If it goes higher, I'm going to rebuy at 50 and play it up to the next even number and repeat the cycle all over again. Okay. And it's just from data and a system that I teach. That's why these – see the guy, the master pro traders in the room, the 10? Yep. They've been on subscription with me for over five years to be get the master handle. Otherwise, you're just a pro trader in the room or a trader. But these guys that trade the system, it works. And that's why they're willing to be with me day after day in the room because this is the picks that I put out. So after 21, look, it went down. I only had 900 shares left, but I booked seven grand. And then I'm going to- There gonna you go. Play Round of applause. Through. That's a good day. And I'm going to play it back through. Look, it goes 2080, 2090 again. 2070. And then here, right, it went right back through. 2118 again. It went right back up. And this is what I traded in the futures today. Uh, in the NQ NASDAQ futures, we trade futures in the room, crypto in the room, and stocks. And I held an overnight my position. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, and let me ask you one more question. But but, how do folks stay in touch if they want to get in on the room? They want to keep in touch, follow along with the trades. How do they do that? Uh, easy. You can go to my Twitter. Okay. On Mojo Day Trading, uh, Pro Trader Mike on Twitter. You can click right here, my Discord link, right here at the top, and join my Discord.
Boom. I have 57,000 right. followers on Twitter. I'm a social media guy out there. I do a lot of postings on Twitter. Do you do a lot of TikToks? No TikToks. That's the next one. I'm telling you. Is it? I see a I lot of trading TikToks. TikToks. But it's just live trading? Uh, yeah. Do so yeah, you know what it is? I use this up. Restreamio program right here. Restreamio. Okay. And it connects to Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, and all those other ones where when I, reach, when I stream, it connects to all of them at the same time. Okay. But TikTok's not on there. You can't connect TikTok. All right. Well, we got to so get once that TikTok thing. gets up to par, not Heinz par, but up to speed, <laughs> then, uh, then, I'll, then I'll probably do that. But, yeah, I've heard that. All right. Well, there you have it, guys. Pro Trader Mike gracing us today, taking us through a setup, giving us the trading principle. But we're hey. going to move on to Vaxart in a minute here. Hey, I tell but, you right uh, now, yep. everybody listening, you look at all the charts on everything you've done and look at the biggest green candles on any chart, and it's always going through the even number. And my challenge to you and every person ever listening, show me a Heinz trade play that doesn't work. If it didn't come from 20 and now it's going through the even number, no, no. It's at 70, 80, 90. You show me it doesn't work, and I'll give you a lifetime membership to Mojo Day Trading for nothing. Boom. And I'll give you all my courses and carte blanche to everything for nothing. And you know why I say that? Because it'll never happen. In 10 years, I've never had a student not show me a Heinz trade play that went through the even number. So peace to you all. Thank you so much for having me on the show. And I hope this helps so many traders out there, whether you're swing trading, day trading, crypto trading, or futures trading, it's always going to go through that even number. Peace. Perfect. Peace. So, so there we have it, guys. Pro Trader Mike, if you are just joining us, let me catch you up to speed. This is the Power Hour. I am in a different setup today. It was my main man, Drew Levine, making his second ever appearance at BZHQ. Drew, can you give us a mic check? Mic check. How do I sound, Luke? There you there? go. You sound right. good. I mean, we, we, we have a big interview coming up. We're, we're talking to, to a very interesting company, a fan favorite. Uh, ticker VXRT. There we go. We got it on the screen. Uh, get, gonna, gonna be joining us, Vaxart, in in just a couple of minutes here. Um, but but Drew, you know, we we we, we got to talk some more stocks today. Tesla. I want to take a look down the the Tesla option chain before we hop off. What what else do you have on your radar that we got to make sure we get to? And guys, in the chat, you have tickers. Drop them in. We always deliver. Okay. Yeah. So the first thing that I kind of looked at today was wish.com. You know, get, right, so get some hate, get down. some love. Well, I'm um, writing wish down. We're going to do right. a wish screen share. I set up a wish.com <laughs> shopping account. So we're going to do that as well. It, <laughs> oh, no, it I'd is like to But all right, keep going. What, what else? In addition to wish, what else do you have? I made a nice trade on copper, but I, I used the ticker FCX Freeport. All right. Nicole so we're going to look at FCX trade. today too. And then we're mm -hmm. also going to look at uh, SENS. I'm pulling that one out of the chat, okay? All right. Sounds good. All right. So so, so there's the move, guys. We have the list of stocks we're going to get to. Uh, in, in just uh, 15 seconds from now, we're going to be talking VaxArt. After that, Tesla, Wish, FCX, Sends, all on the list. Um, but, but without further ado, let's, let's bring our next very special guest on the stream with us. Andre, welcome to the Power Hour. You like the intro music? I love it. I was actually uh, I you saw know, that dancing on it. Yeah. Excellent, excellent, guys. Andre, thank you so much for, for joining the Power Hour with us on your Friday. Guys, again, the ticker is VXRT. That's Victor X-Ray Romeo Tango. Somebody in Zinger Nation, help your fellow chatters out. Drop that ticker in the chat. Um, but, but Andre, but before we get into it, uh, for anybody who isn't aware, could you just give us a, a quick little background on the company, um, you know, both some of, some of the COVID initiatives and, you know, what you guys were doing pre-COVID as well, I think is interesting. Sure. So Vaxart has been around for over 10 years, uh, based in South San Francisco, has been working on 
changing how you think about vaccines, right? So all of us think vaccines look like that. We think that's a terrible way of delivering vaccines. It's, it's the internal combustion engine, okay? So what we want to do, we want to do the Tesla. This is the Tesla of vaccines. This is bad. This is good. Uh, but this is not easy to do. So the company has been working for um, over 10 years on that. Just before COVID happened, we published in a prestigious journal, The Lancet, a head-to-head -head study that basically showed that our little pill is as good as the leading uh, injectable flu vaccine. This is in people. This is uh, um, was funded by our favorite uh, uncle, uh, Uncle Sam, uh, so it was sponsored by Barda. And so we've been working on that, uh, and I'll go into more details. Uh. Excellent. Um, so, 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 so I guess let, let's start off with the COVID nineteen program. I, I mean, I, I think it's it's really interesting. Uh, you know, I was I was taking a, a read through through the investor presentation, which is awesome, guys. I'm going to drop this investor presentation in the chat, so all you can can take a look at it and follow along. Um, but but it seems like 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 some of the problems that we have with, with the existing vaccines is that uh, you know you have the storage issue right where where you have to keep them refrigerated you you have expiration um, you know the, the injection uh, so so can you just talk a little bit about and I know you were alluding to it but a little bit about the advantages of the approach that you guys are taking versus what's currently on the market yeah so look I mean I think some of you have taken the COVID vaccine or other vaccines right. So you, you know what's involved there, right? You need to schedule it to go. Okay, let me show you how we see taking a vaccine should be. I just got vaccinated, okay, okay, in my own home. And that's what we think the future is. So what does that mean? You know, many people say, look, COVID is over here in the US. Well, we, we commissioned a poll and it turns out a quarter of Americans don't want to get vaccinated by needle but a third of them would take a, um, a, a pill uh, an oral covid vaccine that's almost 20 million people that could help us get over the herd immunity threshold right the second if we need booster shots right year after year wouldn't it be nice to take a vaccine like i just showed rather than to have to take time and so on thirdly yeah. um i was out for two days i took one of the mrna vaccines each time I was out for a day, uh, that's bad. We hope that our vaccine is better tolerated. So far, the data we had across seven viruses supports that. Okay. And then, then let's not forget about international, right? So, so we live in an interconnected world. You guys like to travel. I like to travel. We do commerce. Less than 1% of Africa is vaccinated. Right. So for these countries, having something that doesn't require medical specialists and refrigeration would be would be fantastic. OK. Um, and, and, and so so I guess is the bigger play that the U.S. side of things like like you were alluding to it with getting folks in the U.S. who, who don't want to take the traditional vaccine or the or the boosters or, or is the bigger play the, the international non-U.S. market that you're talking about? I think it's both. And, okay. and, and, and I think it's I think it's beyond COVID, as you said, right? So ideally, we would you know when you every year you would get a pill or two pills that's your flu vaccine and your COVID vaccine, and and you are done, right? So so we wanna you know like Tesla, they they started with one car, now they have I don't know four or five models. You guys know that that's exactly what we are going after here. So we have a lot of programs that lend themselves to an oral tablet vaccine. Okay. Um, and, and, and can you talk about the relationship with Johnson and Johnson or, or, or Janssen, their, their, you know, their medical side, side of the business? We've got a lot of folks in the chat asking about that. Well, sure. So, so let's take a step back and say that all of us in the vaccine business that have been developing COVID vaccines have been extremely busy on that. And while j, &J is still a little bit bigger than us, um, uh, they are also very focused on, on COVID. You know, they have their COVID vaccine. We yep. have a question you asked us is because we have a partnership with them. Yep. We are trying to develop what's called the universal flu vaccine. So that's a vaccine that you don't need to change every year. It doesn't depend on which strains are, are, are uh, uh, most prevalent. So we, we, we have that relationship. We also have a, a quadrivalent vaccine that's our own. 
And later this year, we're going to determine jointly with them how to best proceed. Uh, but again, just because we were a year ago when I took over as, as, as CEO, we're just 12 people. Now we are 80. We are growing fast. So we want to pace ourselves. And, and, and right now we are focused on COVID and on norovirus, which is another big program of ours. Okay. Um, and and uh, can you talk about how far along you are? Can, can you talk about the pipeline? What announcements we, we should be looking out for on, on the time horizon? I know you guys have a, a ton of cash to, to fuel R&D, um, but, but could you talk about you know, what we should be looking out for next as, as investors? Uh, great, great question. So on the, on the COVID front, we started with a, a vaccine that, that targets, targets not only the S, the spike protein, but also the nucleotide, which makes it more likely to act across variants. Right? So we're going to continue that. We're also going to put into the clinic a couple of S-only vaccines. We announced okay. that, that we're going to go into phase two around the middle of the year. Uh, so, so you'll see that. Um, there are, of course, lots of experiments going behind the scenes uh, to try to compare and contrast these various uh, vaccine variants. So we may, from time to time, put some of that data out there. Um, on the norovirus front, we started three clinical trials this year. We're going to start the fourth one later this year. So you're going to see uh, data announcements there also. Okay. So you're going to be busy, be basically. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was just about to say. It, it sounds like, like it's going to be a busy year but with lots of data coming out. Um, you know, an, an, another question coming out of the chat, and shout out Zinger Nation if you're watching this with us. Uh, you are a member of Zinger Nation out there in the chat. Uh, there, there, there's been several questions asking about government partnerships, either with the U.S. government uh, or, or with governments in, in Africa, Asia, et cetera. Um, I don't know if you have anything that, that you can share on that front. Well, of course. So we talked about that a lot. Um, I can say that from our public announcements, you, 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 you can gather that we would have hoped to be in phase two earlier than mid-year. But everybody, the whole supply chain was jammed and, yeah. and everybody got delayed, as did we. Um, so, so I think it's a bit data dependent too, right? Um, and, and, but we, we have a lot of those discussions ongoing. There are parts of the world that are really, really hurting, like India, like Latin America. You could appreciate that that oh, appeal yeah. is much more helpful there than in the US where we are developed. So, you know, I can't promise anything. I, I can't get into details, but we have very active, interesting discussions. Absolutely. And 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 to clarify, is is phase two still on track for, for some time mid this year? Yes, yes, yes. Around the middle of the year, definitely. Yeah. Okay. All right, so so it's coming up. I, I, there's a lot of phase two questions in in the chat as well, um, and and Andre, let, let, let me ask you this one. This is is one of the toughest questions I think that that I have to ask people. Oops. But 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 uh, you know, don't worry, it's a good one. Uh, if if you had to name one thing, one thing that you were most excited for, what would that be? Well, it's really. Uh, the fact that we are working on potentially impacting uh, healthcare globally. I think that freeing people from the needle, it's really could be a, a historic achievement in, in healthcare globally. Okay, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the idea of, of vaccines as, as a pill is, I mean, it, it's super interesting. Let, let me ask this. Um, you know, I, I know you mentioned you, you took over last year, but, but where did the idea or where did the concept of, of switching sort of this, this vaccine delivery mechanism come from or, or, or how did the business get started? It, it came from our very smart uh, founder and, and current uh, chief scientific officer, uh, Dr. Sean Tucker. Uh, he used to work in, in, in gene therapy before and he said he likes to tell people that, look, I was too lazy to go get my flu vaccine. And I thought, why doesn't the vaccine come to me? And yep. that's how... That's how it all started. And, you know, we like to shop online for a reason. It's convenient. Why do I have to go to CVS and stand in line to get my vaccine, right? It's, it's, it's uh, um, anachronistic. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, Andre, anything else that, that, that we haven't talked about or, or anything else we, we should make sure that we get to? No, just, uh, you know, people that want to dig in a, a bit more, they should be aware that like the Tesla works very differently than an internal combustion engine. 
an oral vaccine works very differently than an injected vaccine. Our vaccine it is designed to trigger mucosal immunity, is designed to produce what's called IgAs, T cells. We hope that for these reasons, it's much more cross-reactive than injectable. So if you want to dig in, you know, we are not meant to produce serum antibodies. You know, you look at the head-to-head -head flu challenge study, we produced one-tenth of the um, IgGs in the serum than the injectable vaccine. We protect it the same, right? It's just, so you need to be aware of that. Okay. And, and, and let, let me ask one more question. I, I, I've seen a few folks in the chat asking about as well. Uh, in, in terms of distribution of the pill, right? Let, let's say we're, we're into the commercial phase. Um, you know, you, you mentioned the convenience. I'm definitely part of that group who's too lazy to go to CVS to get my COVID or get my flu shot each year. Um, so, so I would love to get it. Yeah too, yeah, too busy. Yes, I will say that. Too lazy, too busy, you know, however you want to put it. Um, but but I'm, I'm in that cohort. Uh, so, so, uh, you know, ha have you guys thought about how you'll, you'll distribute it? Like, is it, um, you know, working with online pharmacies? Is it somebody like an Amazon? Is it, you're going direct to consumers? I mean, I any know, thoughts on how that would work? That's, that's definitely on our radar, but again, okay. remember it's a global, it's, it's, it's a global aim. So we'd also like to produce globally, right? Maybe India, maybe Latin America. So the distribution will start from there. And here in the U S Yes, it would be ideal if you could just receive this at your home. Yep, awesome. All right, guys, there you have it. Vaxart, super interesting company, highly demanded by the chat. We always try to come through for you guys. Smash that like button. And, and, and Andre, it, thank you so much for coming on with us on your Friday. In, any good plans for the weekend? I'll, I'll ask that one too. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm now, uh, here in Miami beach. I hope that, uh, I can, I can do some boating over the weekend. I hope that we're not going to have hurricanes. So, uh, yeah. How about you? All right. All right. Uh, I, I may have some boating in, in my future as well. Granted, I'm stuck up here in Michigan, not quite Miami. Miami is an amazing place. I was just there for, for a crypto conference, uh, uh, a few weeks ago, but but I, I may get some Michigan boating in as well. And, and while you're down there in Miami or you're on the ocean, you should definitely try to get some fishing in too. But some of the best okay. in the world. All right, I'll awesome. Th th thanks thank so much for having on. us. A absolutely. And and again, everyone, uh, ticker. Let, let let's get it back up on the screen here. There we go. V X R T. So super highly requested company, um, you know, doing doing some really cool things. Uh, and, and guys, let, let me ask this one. I'm going to throw this one out to the chat, out to Zinger Nation. Uh, if you guys are, are in the stock, drop me the one in the chat. If not, drop me the two. I want to get a sense of where everybody is at. I know you guys have been asking about that ticker for a while. And of course, hit that like button. And more importantly, subscribe to the channel. We are delivering on the interviews, the companies you guys demand all day, every day on this channel. Um, and, and let's kick it back over to the trade ideas. I mean, this is the power hour. This is the trade idea show. Um, Drew, you you were mentioning the, the, the tickers we rattled off that we were going to go through before we're done. We said Tesla. We said Wish. We said FCX. And we said Sends, which was one coming out of the chat. Um Drew, do, do, do you have an opinion on where we start? You're, you're like in the good seat today. Here, let's move you up to the top of the scene. I, I, I gave, you, gave you my little booth. Uh, do, do, you, do you have an opinion on, on where we start? Yeah. So, you know, I, first of all, I appreciate you for uh, giving me the stand here. I uh, love the, uh, the setup here. Let's start off with Wish and see where that goes. Okay. All right. We're, we're going to start off with Wish. And, guys, this is a stock show. Okay. We're going to get to the stock in a second. But I recently just discovered Wish.com. When the stock started going crazy, I created the account, logged in. I mean, it, it is literally just like a ton of crap in here. Like, like, like th this is what what the experience shopping on Wish.com is. We can get this. Uh, I'd smoke my last bowl with you. We can get this laser. We can get this. Uh, this must be for measuring food out if you're trying to portion your food. Um, you know, this is to keep you healthy, I guess. You can have your uh, vitamins in your car. <laughs> I mean, it's a weird <laughs> website. Do you want this this uh, gold Trump ring for 84 cents, Drew? That, that's, that's what we're talking about. There is our, our wish.com. 
So, so, so that's a consumer experience. Again, this is a stock market show. This is the trade idea show. So, so let's kick it back to the chart. Here's the I mean, trade I, chart. I would think that? Wish has a more upside. Okay, you like the stock. Well, it's because when I bought these mouse pads, these orange ones, it was they were so cheap, they were shitty. But when people discover a place for cheap stuff, the word gets the word gets spread. And if I wanted to ask people, hey, do you know Wish? I would say very few people do. And so I, I do think there's potential to see nice revenue sales growth. Mm -hmm. Just like with Benzinga, you know, our video channel, we do some great work, but arguably less than 0.00001% of the population know about our channel. So when people find out about it, like, oh, okay, here's a CNBC alternative. So I think there's a lot more like to come here with Wish. Um, I don't own the stock, Luke. Um, okay. That's just because I've been loading up on some other stocks. And um, yeah, that's it. And guys, keep, keep in mind that this was a SPAC deal, right? So I just zoomed us out to a one-year chart daily candles. Um, as SPACs have fallen out of, out of favor a little bit, the, the stock has is, is, is gotten creamed a little bit. Um, but Drew, all right, you brought up this ticker. Where are you at with it? Are you a bull? Are you a bear? And while Drew's answering, I'm going to throw this one out to the chat. Uh, if you guys like Wish, you you have to pick. This is no this is no Switzerland in World War II. Okay, we're not sitting on the sidelines. If, if one, if you like the stock, two, if you don't, I, I want to get the the quick read where everybody is. Um, but but Drew, you brought this one up for a reason. Take us through it. Yeah, so I think it's a very interesting company. You know, they're getting a lot of hate. Um, you kind of brought up you know that weird Trump ring is kind of still stuck in my mind. But you know. Do they have I'll some buy sauce products? You. Hold on. They'll buy for me? All 83 cents? 84 All right. cents. <laughs> All 84. Wow. All right. Um, don't know if I'll be wearing that too much around the office, but eh, here and there. Wait, what's your ring size? You're a nine. <laughs> I'm a nine. All right. Appreciate it. Um, <laughs> so I think there's some really interesting Oh, and Chris stuff. Catch is correcting us. It's not a SPAC. It's an IPO. Thank you, Chris. Chris K. But all right. Keep going, Drewski. Yeah, but if you look at their numbers, right, they do a hundred million uh, monthly active users. That's a number that you could see very comparable to uh, eBay, to a lot of other big companies out there, right? Just to put things in perspective, I believe Amazon does 300 million active users every single month. So if you look at this, oh, is it one third of the size of Amazon? You know, Amazon has a ton of other businesses. You, know, you can't really compare apples to apples, but it just goes to show you the kind of scale that uh, this company is seeing, right? This isn't some, you know, very small company. And um, yeah, so I think, you know, they've got some upside. Are they profitable? No, they're not. Do they have revenue? Yeah, you know, almost a billion dollars. That's a number. Yeah, so, I think so, do, so doing out. 800 million a quarter in sales. I, I whipped out my trusty calculator, do the quick math, 800 million a quarter, 3.2 billion a year. So, so let's see the market cap of eight and a half billion, 8.5 divided by 3.2 billion. It's only trading at, at 2.7 times uh, price of sales. So, I mean, that is a cheap number. Yeah. I told this to Spencer early on the show. I said, you know, it's in between two and three on the price to sales. And he said, you know, well, look at that against the S and P 500. And this isn't a company that I would necessarily compare against, you know, the market as a whole, right? It's not, you know, a very Ton standard of cash company. Tons yeah. of cash on the There's balance. no debt too, right? So what are you scared of here? Um, the only thing would be that this company bleeds out for, you know, two to three more years and, and dies. But, you know, people like cheap things. And if, if Wish is really able to kind of get itself together on the logistics, which it has been investing on, and they're able to get people products very quick, very um, efficiently, I think this would be a play that, you know, people would be... Um, willing to order from in the future and be, you know, a household name. All right. And shout out to happy Muhammad in the chat, admitting to us, you know, that, that he gets targeted by wish ads. Um, but all right. So, so, so you're, you're a long term. It sounds like bull on wish. Is that accurate? Yeah. I'm not super bullish. I've got a pretty small position, but I yeah, do. You got a one. starter. You got a starter. All right. All right. There you go. You took us through it. Um, and, and when, when we asked the chat, we asked Zinger nation, which is all of you hanging out there with us. Um, uh, we, we said, throw the one in the chat. If you like the stock, the two, if you don't, it was a very mixed crowd. And I sort of like these ones that are mixed. Whenever I see something that's too bullish or too bearish, uh, you know, it, it, it makes me a, a little bit nervous. Um, but, but, but I like it when we get that mixed crowd in there. Um, so, all right. So, so there's wish other stocks. We promise we talk about And guys. If you have tickers that you want us to look at, drop them in the chat, we will get to them. But, but other stocks, we said Tesla, FCX, and SENS. 
I'm going to pick next, Mr. Drew. Uh, and, and I want to take a look at Tesla. Um, let, let, let's pull the thing up right here. It, it's one of the few stocks. I guess there, I, there's a handful that are holding up today. But, but, but it's one of the few stocks that's holding up on a day like today when, when the market is getting killed. S&P has come off of its lows. Tesla, Tesla share price has moved in line with that, uh, kicking us a little bit higher. Um, I sort of, and, and give me your, your quick take on this. I sort of like the idea of selling puts against this stock. Um, you know, we, we, the, we, we've shown, we're going to get buyers in here at the, this 550 level. I think the stock is relatively cheap if it's 550. granted that that's, you know, a, a, a good deal below more than 10% below where it's trading at right now. And so I like the idea of getting synthetically long Tesla via selling puts thoughts on that. Don't think that's a bad idea whatsoever, Luke. Would be interesting to see what kind of strike price you're picking. Are you going to pick a more aggressive strike price, maybe around like high 500s? Are you going to pick a strike price, you know, more um, conservative, maybe low 500s, maybe high fours? Um, you know, it all depends on its strategy. You know, are you just trying to kind of wheel that option premium and get you some cheap shares, or are you just kind of trying to sit on the sideline and hope hope to make a quick buck off that premium? Yeah, so 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 let, let let me show you what I'm thinking, and let let's do the quick math. Or I guess we're doing a lot of fundamentals this show, um, but but I'm 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 pulling up our income statement here. My trusty Benzinga Pro, uh, you know, so so there we go. We've got revenue there, and we can look at it in our calendar view as well to to show the the history of beats and misses. But but you have the company that's putting up ten billion dollars a quarter of sales. That's that's forty billion a year. Um, you know, we, we have a $680 billion market cap divided by 40 billion. So, so there's 17 times sales that that's obviously expensive, but, but if you put a, a, a 20% discount on that, which, which is around where I'm looking to sell puts that, then it brings it down, down to 13 times sales. Is that still expensive? Is that still more than double where the S and P 500 is at? Yes, it absolutely is. But, but check this out. I mean, we're, we're talking about a company that over the past several quarters, let's look at about two years here has more than doubled revenue. And it's not a small cap stock that's doubled revenue, right? We're, we're talking about, about a, a mega cap company that's doubled revenue. So, so, and I, and I haven't looked at the pricing on these yet, but, but 550 is the price that I want to look at for selling those puts because we do have that support there. Mm, totally. So I think, yeah, that's a really good way to look at this, right? It does have a high price to sales, but you're paying for growth, right? I think, you know, we see Tesla's on the road here and there, but you know, it's not a car that's being driven around like a Toyota, right? If it was able to be produced at that scale, which one day I, th I think, you know, it, it easily could be, then, you know, this justification would make sense. Yeah. So, so, so here, here's the move guys. We're, we're looking two weeks out, 14 days. So two Fridays from now, um, uh, we're, we're going to sell the 550 puts. Let's, let's talk through the trade. The price is $5 and 40 cents. So, so right away in our account, uh, we're, we're going to get credited 540 bucks. So that's cash. That's coming into the brokerage account right away. As soon as we sell these puts, the risk that we're taking is that sometime between now and two weeks from now, we might have to buy shares of Tesla for 550. Um, which is a risk that I'm absolutely okay doing. So, so it's a way to sort of open up that that synthetic uh, long position in the stock. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a good strategy. I would say I like it, Luke. Uh, are you thinking about pull? Oh, are you thinking Boom. about pulling the trigger? No, he's pulling it. He shoots. He shot. Order filled. Snipe the market. All Boom, right, there Luke. it is. And, and and we have uh, Bill in the chats telling us that that Ripster was talking wish this morning as well on on the bullish side. So so he's there with you with you, Drew. So boom, there we go. We we say this is the trade idea show. We're delivering on it. We had backs our highly requested stock. Uh, you had your 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 wish pitch. I just opened up my my again. I like to call it my synthetic long position in Tesla. Again, I'm getting 540 bucks into the account today. It's a fairly low risk trade. You know, Tesla would have to sell off 75 bucks between now and two weeks from now uh, for, for, for me to get hammered into that one. Um, I can always buy the stock on margin, too. Um, <laughs> but but <laughs> I still that one in there, too. Yeah, Luke I, got his margin. Mar I do. Love yeah, I got to watch you. We got to bring in a risk manager here at Benzinga, I think, soon. Make sure the All right. We're, we're, we're running into our, our last <laughs> few minutes, Mr. Drew. All um, right. 
let, 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 let's kick it over to Ford. That, that, that's one that, that I'm, I'm seeing a ton of people talking about in the chat. Um, it, it's a stock that I actually have three open positions on right now. Um, so, so I'm going to talk about the, the three open positions that I have on Ford just to, to give some transparency as to where I'm at on this one. And, and then why don't you hop in and, and talk about the price action a little bit. Uh, but, but right now I, I own shares. I own the common outright. Uh, I own the $12 strike, uh, 2022 calls. Okay. Uh, and then I'm short, I believe it's the 16 strike calls that are expiring next Friday. Um, so, so, so there you go. Th those are three bullish positions that, that I have on Ford. This wasn't a 2021 stock of the year, right? We, we've seen this thing climb from the mid eights is when we put all, we put the first two of those trades on. Uh, so, so definitely well into the green on them. Obviously, the stock has fallen out of favor a little bit over the past, let's call it 10 trading days or so. These are daily candles we're looking at. Um, where, where are you at with this thing, Mr. Drew? Yeah, so Ford is a stock that I've been looking at ever since I started investing. It's an interesting play right here in Detroit slash Dearborn. So local play there. And it, it did push up nice. You know, I think it's the, the whole car and like industry has seen like huge push up because of tesla people want to get in you know other plays they like gm they like ford so i think it's a good kind of uh combination play whatever you want to call it and um yeah it's been pushing up nice i personally am not going to be uh buying into ford but i mean look look at their price to sales compared to tesla it's it's looking super cheap there we go okay and, and we'll throw this one out to the chat as well last question of the day and then i've got to go hop onto a call with one of our favorite etf companies direction etfs giving us all those levered instruments to play with but guys uh ticker f where are you at one if you are bullish two if you're bearish uh you know my perspective i'm just selling calls against the long positions that i have so 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 if i uh if, if this price goes up, you know, 10% over the course of the week, I'm out, close the trade, call it a day. If the price stays where it is or goes down, I'm just lowering my cost basis week by week by week, you know, like a good 50 bucks at a time. So, so there's my move with it. Drew, thank you for joining us, taking the, 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 the hot seat for the day. Uh, any, any final words of wisdom, but before I got to go hop off uh, to talk to direction. No, I think uh, do your DD, watch Benzinga, and then uh, wait for them to talk about your stocks. All right. Boom. There it is, guys. Happy trading. We will see you soon. Stay on. We're about to get to get technical, okay? So if you are a technical trader, Neil Hamilton is about to take you through the charts, uh, show you what he's looking at, what he is trading today. Um, so, so let's go and let's get to that. Uh, and, and you just stay on the stream. It'll redirect you over there. Peace. Have a good weekend, everybody.